COVID-19 Response Chief Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. says Philippines may scale back on its quarantine policies according to zones by June. Galvez explains there would be four zones, the critical area, containment area, buffer zone, and economic area. Galvez says the critical area would be cordoned off or locked down completely. The containment area would be the area surrounding the critical zone. The bordering buffer zone would separate the areas of infection to the area where economic activity is allowed. Outside the buffer zone is the economic zone where businesses may be allowed to open at more or less 50% to 100%. Galvez says the zoning has already been proposed to President Rodrigo Duterte. Meanwhile, in Pampanga, a total of 490 Chinese citizens in Clark Freeport Zone are tested for COVID-19 on Thursday, May 21. A report from regional police say those tested were Chinese tenants from Fontana Leisure Parks and Chinese workers of the Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators or POGOs inside the residential resort. But sources tell Rappler about 70 Filipino employees of the POGO and other tenant establishments inside Fontana were not tested for COVID-19. Rappler tried to get comments from the Clark Development Corporation about the situation of the Filipino workers. The state-owned corporation has yet to respond. The Energy Regulatory Commission, or ERC, orders power distribution companies to give customers new bills that reflect actual consumption instead of basing it on average consumption. In an advisory on Friday, May 22, the ERC says power firms must conduct actual meter readings not later than June 8. Companies like Beralco charge customers during March and April using average consumption during December to February after meter reading was suspended due to the Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ. Meralco earlier said bills for May were based on actual meter readings with unprecedented bill charges caused by high domestic consumption during lockdown. The ERC also ordered power distributors to implement a staggered six-month payment scheme for bills covered in the ECQ period without penalties and interest. Subsequent installments will be due every 15th of the month starting July until fully paid. The Bureau of Immigration, or BI, filed deportation charges against Javier Salvador Para, the Spanish resident of Desmarinas village, Makati City, assaulted and nearly arrested by cops for allegedly violating quarantine rules. The BI on Friday, May 23, says it filed charges against Para for undesirability and for overstaying. The city of Makati also earlier filed a criminal complaint against Para for unjust vexation, disobedience, assault, violating quarantine rules, and not wearing a face mask. On April 26, a policeman demanded that Para pay a 1,000 peso fine for allowing their house helper to water their plants in front of their house without a face mask. Videos showed Para cursing the policeman, who then attempted to arrest Para by tackling him to the ground. Para's assault is seen as an example of the heavily-handed approach the police had taken towards lockdown violators. On April 19, policemen barged into the Pacific Plaza Towers condominium in Taguig City. While Corporal Winston Ragus was killed on April 21 by police in Quezon City after allegedly violating quarantine rules. Five women make up the top 10 of the graduating class of the Philippine Military Academy. The class valedictorian is a woman, Cadet First Class Jemalin Diocares Sugi. It will only be the sixth time that a woman graduates at the top of her class since the PMA started accepting women in 1993. There have been three women valedictorians since 2017. Sugi graduated from the University of the Philippines Baguio before entering the PMA. Of the 196 members of PMA's Masidlawin class of 2020, 23 are women. Four robots represented 179 graduating students of Senator Renato Compañero Cayetano Memorial Science and Technology High School in Taguig City on Friday, May 22. Attached to each robot's neck is a tablet that shows the face of the student being called to the stage. As a robot rolls onto the stage, the graduate's face and name are displayed on a giant LED screen. Using robots instead of being physically present has been done in other countries due to the lockdowns and requirements of physical distancing during the coronavirus pandemic. In April, the Department of Education announced graduation and other end-of-school-year activities wouldn't be allowed during the quarantine period to adhere to the no-mask-gathering policy of the Interagency Task Force.